Once again, we appreciate that you are with us here. Without any further... Not started? You are live. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we are getting different stories. We are told that you, are, you can hear us and uh, some colleagues are saying that you can't hear us. But with that as it may, we, we really appreciate that you are with us to listen to this broadcast, uh, to speak to very important matters that confront the country as a consequence of COVID. Uh, we have said that we will be adopting a, ri a risk-adjusted approach uh, to ease our lockdown to the fourth level. Uh, without any further ado, I will then call upon our Minister of Cocta, Minister Nkosa Zanatlamini Zuma, to speak to us. Minister. <laughs> For SAPC, I'll take off the mask because they say they don't hear me <laughs> with the egg. I hope they will, with time, they will hear me. <clears throat> uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen of the media, and lay, uh, compatriots at home. Just to remind ourselves that last week, the president announced that we are going to move from level four, from level five to level four, and that we are not lifting the lockdown per se, but we are adopting a risk-adjusted approach where we will progressively allow the economy to function whilst at the same time taking precautions to make sure that the spread of the virus is contained. And then on Saturday, we spoke to you about what that might entail. And that was a whole document that on which uh, the, the, the regulations would be based. But we decided that, government decided that we must at least consult the public. So we put that document in public and asked for comments. And we did receive the comments. Some of the issues were taken on board Others were not easy to take on board in relation to the spread of the virus. So I will mention some of those that we were able to take on board. But let me just say thank the public because there was a, a, a good response even though the time was short. There were over 70,000 uh, submissions, though some of them came after the deadline. And also there were about 800 and something uh, from the business sector. So it was a good response and we thank uh, everyone who responded. Others of course sent us SMSs and calls and didn't necessarily send uh, submissions. So I will now go to um, the things that, uh, before I go to the regulations, one of the, popu the most popular submission was on exercise. Um, over 22,000 people wanted exercise. Uh, but I'll come back to what the regulations say about exercise. Um, let me just say that, again, as we said last time, we still expect everyone to be at home. Every person must be at home. And we will then mention this, the, the exceptions. 
and that you may only leave home if you are going to work uh, or perform any function that is allowed under level seven, level four, sorry. So you are allowed to go to work on all things that are on level four. You are also allowed, as was in level five, to go out to do your, your shopping. We will also say what kind of things you can now buy. Before, it was mainly groceries, mainly uh, pharmaceutical uh, products, toiletries, and those kind of things, uh, baby clothes. But as I, as I talk about regulations, I will also say what more things we can now buy. And of course, we also are saying that children can move. We were informed by the public that lots of children were, some of them had visited grandparents, some of them had visited uncles, aunts, and so on. And they are allowed now to move back to their homes. And the co-parenting movement is also allowed. There is also, a, you can also leave to go and exercise. We did stress last time that the president said exercise will be allowed under very strict conditions. And we said we will announce those strict conditions when we announce the regulations. So under these regulations, you can cycle, you can run, you can walk, but it will have to be within your neighborhood, within about five kilometer radius of your neighborhood, your home. And it will also be not under organized groups, can run as a club or as a group, but you also can only do that between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. So three hours, we can all cycle, run, walk within our residence, not in organized groups because we still need to keep to the health, social distancing, and we also uh, need to limit then the time. So that is about the exercise that so many people uh, were longing for. We are also saying that in the evenings, though more people will be going to work under level four, than under level five, because under level five, it was really essential services, basically. But now there'll be more people going to work. But when you come back from work, you have to be at home. It's not a license for now coming back from work, visiting your relatives, visiting your friends, no. You have to come back and go back home. So between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m., you, if you are not having a permit to be out, you cannot be out. So you have to be at home between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. And of course, there are people who work in Gauteng, but they live in Northwest, or they live in Pumalanga, or they live in Limpopo, in the, neighbor, in, the, in the neighborhood, and they commute every day. If they are supposed to go to work, they will then have a permit to show that they, can, they are allowed. And when the schools do open whenever, if there are kids, 
all university students who have to commute in that way, they also will have to have a permit. We also know that there is no a movement between provinces. Now, this is very important because provinces are at different levels of the infection. Some have a much higher rate of infection. So we don't want those who are at a higher rate of infection to keep moving to those who are at a moderate rate of infection and then increase the infection in those provinces. So movement between provinces is still not allowed. Of course, funerals are still allowed. You can, under very strict conditions again, go to the funerals. If you are a close relative and it's not changed from what it was, what it is as we speak today, only those close relatives are allowed and under the same conditions they have to have it death certificate, they have to have a permission that they will get from police station or a magistrate, so it's still like that. It's also still the same that you can't have night vigils. But it's also important during the week not to have crowds because the infection will also uh, take place during the week if a lot of people come to the home of the bereaved at the same time. So we also, we know that in our culture, Fanesio, to do and console the family, but we must not go in big crowds. And the funerals, we must take all the precautions including sanitizing, gloves for those who are digging the graves and not sharing water and all those things. So funerals, it will be like that. Now, there were people, as we all know, N2, N1, N3, all the national roads were full as soon as the president announced that there will be a 21-day lock, 21 lockdown, people decided to move from some of the major centers like Jobek, Deben, and so on. They went to their homes. Some of them would need to come back for work if their companies are opening. Some of them went there, but they ordinarily reside in another province. So there will be a once-off allowance for people to move from the provinces they are in to the provinces that they are going to be working in and to move if they were not at home, if they were visiting somewhere and they were locked down there to come back home once off. And once they've arrived, they cannot go home weekends, days, some days decide I'm going to Limpopo, I'm going to KZN. No, once you come back, you come back until the end of level four. So it's a once off movement. And I think all of us must understand it. It's a once-off movement from one province to the other. And once we are in that province, there's no commuting going up and down. Uh, weekends going this way, after the weekend coming this way, no. So I just thought I should stress that. And of course, uh, my colleagues will talk a lot more on the industries, but even the industries that are going to be opened, retailers, manufacturing, whatever, hardware shops, it's important for them to prepare properly because their health 
protocols still need to be observed. Sanitation, PPE, where it's needed, masks are, co- are mandatory, and of course, social distancing. There is no industry that is supposed to undermine those things. So it's important for them to come prepare so that when the employers, more employers come, the company is ready, is COVID-19 ready. And it's important because if you are not COVID-19 ready and people come, you don't screen them, they come and start working, you don't adhere to the protocols, sooner or later, there will be a spread of the virus in that company. And that company will be forced to close. So it's it's good to prepare properly, to spend a bit of money making sure that you are COVID-19 ready so that you can work for much longer without uh, many problems. So that is very important. It doesn't matter what company it is, those preparations are important. And it's also important that workers should come in a phased manner, especially in those industries where there are thousands of people who are coming back to work. You can't just suddenly have uh, thousands of people arriving at work on the first day. So it's important to do that in a phased manner and to have a proper plan that is known by the workers and by everyone that you can keep in the company that this is our COVID-ready plan and this is our what we do in the company to make sure that there is no spread, not just the preparations for arrival, but also when work is continuing, what are the measures that each company is going to take. And the employers must know so that if those measures are not adhered to, they can raise an alarm. But also the departments that work with certain sectors may want to monitor and make sure that those companies do actually uh, adhere to that. In terms of, now I was talking about movement of people within the country. Now our borders, the sea borders, ports, the airports, the land ports of entry are still closed. So our borders are not open, except for goods that are arriving into the country or leaving the country, especially to our neighboring states. The movement of people across the borders is only allowed under very exceptional circumstances like South Africans returning home who were stuck somewhere. Uh, When they return, they must be quarantined for 14 days before they go to their families or their homes or to work or anywhere. That's very important because we know that some of them will be coming from very high-risk countries where the infection is much higher than it is here. And so it's important for them to be quarantined so that we know when they come out to go to their families or to the communities they do not have COVID-19. And people who, citizens of other countries who were stuck here, who are stuck here during the lockdown, who want to be repatriated, there is a process that uh, uh, is coordinated mainly by DECO and embassies to repatriate them so they can leave the country. But otherwise, The ports are only opened for uh, goods that 
are coming in, imports or exports that are going out of the country. And tourism will also assist those tourists who were quarantined far away from the ports to make sure that they come to the ports on time for their flights. So those are the movements of people. And again, recreational visits are not allowed. Now I'm going to go to things that are not allowed. We are saying uh, people should not be evicted during this time uh, from their residences, but also people should not take advantage of that and think they can now go and occupy a building illegally because they are not going to be evicted or occupy land illegally or houses illegally. Uh, only because the real estate and, and, and renta, rentals and hotels and all those things are not yet open. So that's why we are saying that it would not be allowed. And of course, the courts, we, if, if people go to the courts, the courts will then also look at that matter. In terms of transport, public transport, there will be taxis as they are now, private cars as they are now, e-hailing as there is now. But because more people will be going to work than other forms of transport like buses and rail would be open, but under strict hygiene conditions and health. But also the Minister of Transport will say uh, how this will happen. He will issue directions of how this will happen. And transportation of cargo, as I said, things that are manufactured here that are allowed and for export, they can be transported to the ports for export. They can also be transported internally. And we are now saying all agricultural products uh, are allowed to move to the ports to be exported, including uh, wine, including wool, including many other things um, for export, agricultural products, and also other things that we produce for exports can now go to the ports and be exported. And things that are coming from the ports, those that are allowed under level four, can also be transported um, around the country. And we are saying that people are places where people normally gather. There is a whole list, you will see it in the in the Gazette, places like public parks, sports grounds, swimming pools, beaches and uh, flea markets, many other things, nightclubs, casinos, theaters, you name it, it's still not allowed. So people are not allowed to go to those places. Restaurants are not allowed for sit down, but they can deliver food to your home. Those you, they can, you can order for those who are willing to do delivery. And also takeaways will be allowed, but delivery to your home instead of all of us going to crowd there. Even in the townships, we hope there'll be a new 
a business boom up around delivery. Uh, so uh, those things will be allowed only to be delivered. The, the places where the public visit and they are controlled places like correctional services, remand detention facilities, police holding cells, military detention facilities, health establishments, those will still be controlled and you can only go there under conditions that uh, are allowed. Like in hospitals, they can say when you can come and when you can't. Permission. Um, if, you, if you arrive at that place and you have no permission uh, to, to be there or no reason to be there, then you'll be turned back. Then there are things in the economy that will continue not to be allowed. As we said, alcohol is not allowed yet on level four. On Saturday, we had said we consulting in that consulting doc consultation document. We had consulted about allowing cigarettes and related products, tobacco. And as you remember, even at the press conference itself, there was quite an opposition to that. And even in the public comments, there was quite a lot of opposition. More than 2,000 people opposed it. And of course, the government then took that into consideration, debated the matter, looked at it, and decided that we must continue as we are when it comes to cigarettes, tobacco products, and related that we should not open up the sale of products. And the reason are health related. The reasons are health related. Uh, as you know, besides the effects of tobacco itself on the person's lungs, but also the way sometimes tobacco is shared does not allow for social distancing, but also uh, actually encourages the spread of the virus because when people share a cigarette, obviously if one of them has the virus, it will be shared amongst them. And then they'll go home and, and, and then spread it at home. And even those who, who's all, who do uh, tobacco and make a like it's, I don't know what you call it, like a zol in Boza. <laughs> yes. So, sometimes when they zol, I'll read at some stage what one person said about that zol. Because he says, when people zol, they put to saliva on the paper and then zol. And then they share that zol. So it means they are also share if one of them has a virus, they are sharing that person's saliva, but also they are moving saliva from one to the other. So there were lots of health-related reasons, COVID-19-related reasons, why uh, people said we shouldn't open on tobacco. So the sale of tobacco and tobacco products, e-cigarettes and related products is not allowed. It hasn't been allowed, it's still not allowed. Just like alcohol, liquor, all forms of liquor are not allowed in terms of sale. But even if you make your own liquor at home, if you start giving it to others, distributing it and selling it, it's also not allowed. So the sale, the distribution 
of liquor is not allowed, only for export. So those are some of the things that are still not allowed. And there was a lot of discussion about this, and in the end, the government listened and took heed of what the public was saying, especially around the health issues and the fight against COVID issues. So I will not go into details. Last time we also spoke about how much uh, the non-sale of alcohol has freed the hospitals. Our emergency hospitals are normal now. Our emergency units are normal. Our ICU are not filled with people who have been stabbed, shot, people who have been raped, and so on. So the non-sale of alcohol is assisting in the fight for COVID. Besides that, alcohol attracts crowds. Very few people enjoy drinking alone. They want to drink with other people. But besides that, it means that the police can do what they need to do and all the enforcement officers. The hospitals can look after the sick, not after the emergencies uh, that come from the effects of alcohol. And we know even professors in the hospitals, doctors are happy because they can now concentrate on, fi on, on looking after people who are sick with all sorts of other illnesses, including COVID. So then in terms of businesses, my colleagues will talk a lot more about that, but some of the things remain like energy, ESCOM. ESCOM is supposed to give us electricity. So the mines that supply ESCOM with coal were opened and they will remain open. And ESCOM can work at full capacity depending on the demand. Um, Mining, it's maybe fuel. Uh, we, there'll be more people now on the road needing fuel to go to work and trans more transport. So refineries may now go to full capacity, including other facilities that provide energy and fuel, amongst which uh, there will be furnaces, smelters, and some other plants. So that will be allowed. Mining, uh, as we said even last time, will be allowed at 50% capacity except the open cast mining. That can go up to 100%, just like the coal mining that goes to ESCOM. And there will be strict conditions under which the miners come back to the, to, to the mines. And the department has developed a very extensive uh, directions to the, to the employees and employers on what needs to be done. What do we have in our regulations? Uh, just highlights of things that need to be done, but there is a very detailed a document that the department has developed together with the unions and employers. Of course, there will be fines and penalties for some of the offenses. Um, if you do something that you are not supposed to do, some of the things will mean fine or even imprisonment. The Minister of Agriculture is here, so she, she'll talk a bit more about the agriculture. But basically, agriculture, hunting, forestry, fishing, beekeeping, 
um, and all the related things will be allowed. So she will expand on that. I won't go any further. Uh, electricity, gas, water supply is permitted as it has been permitted. I won't go uh, any further. Uh, the Minister of DTIC is here, trade and industry and competition is here. So he will expand on all the other uh, areas, manufacturing, wholesale, uh, retail. But let me say that one of the things uh, that came out strongly in the public comments, people wanted hairdressers to be opened, a lot of people. But unfortunately, at this point, it's not possible because those kind of services, hairdressing, manicure, pedicure, uh, the, the person is closed. They, they, there is no social distancing. People are touching and so on. So we, we heard you, but we can't allow it at this point because it's too risky for the spread of the virus. So we know that it was something that a lot of people asked for. But what we have added in the things that can be bought now are products for foot and hand, manicure, pedicure products, so that at least you can do it. You can buy those things and do it at home. The hair care, maybe, who knows, maybe the hairdressers can open online lessons for people on how to do their hair. But for now, it is not possible. When the risks are gone, that will be opened. But I thought I should just say, because it was one of those popular requests. Um, the wholesalers, one of the things that uh, people requested uh, obviously, our winter clothes and all the things that we, we need for winter. So that is uh, going to be allowed because it's important for people to be warm, even for the fight of COVID, of flu, and for health in general. Because if you've got flu and there's COVID on top of that, it becomes a big problem. So that is uh, going to be allowed and of course, all the things that are used, pro, uh, like fabric for for making face masks, because face mask, cloth face mask are now very uh, important. Heaters, bedding for winter is going to be allowed. And of course, we are still encouraging people who can work at home to work at home. So we are also allowing the telecom services and infrastructure, information and communication technology services, even for private homes, not only for essential services, because we're encouraging people to work at home. So if your computer is broken or something, or you want a new computer, you can now get that. And of course, postal services and courier services will also be permitted for the level four. Uh, there will be on some of the things, media and entertainment, online services. In fact, Minister Mtembu should have spoken about that. Maybe he's still going to talk about it. The pro the the productions for local broadcast, live streaming, uh, the creative sector, and some of the live, the live streaming would be around the messages on COVID. But he can expand on that, newspapers and broadcasting. The financial and business sectors will be opened 
but still we encourage them, those who can work at home, to work at home. Accommodation, as I said, hotels, guest houses, all that is not allowed except for quarantine or for essential services for now. And of course, restaurants and takeaway, those who sell hot food can only do it online and it would be delivered to the people to minimize the contacts and to minimize lots of people leaving their homes, going to these places. And those places then will be open between 900 hours and 1900 hours. And so that uh, workers can also get time to then go home before the curfew. And as I said, for export, uh, all the ports will be open, especially uh, the sea, but also the air for exports and the land, especially for neighboring states that would be importing things. So uh, transport and logistics will be there. And um, repair for cars, people will be going to work and they will need their cars, tow trucks, emergency repairs also of homes, plumbing, electrician, locksmith, all those things will be there uh, because they are necessary for work. And also in private homes, people will be allowed to work, who look after the sick, who look after mentally ill, who look after people with disability, people who work who look after children, they will be allowed. But also living staff will also be allowed. So, and government uh, will, will open some of the services, but there will be other services like licensing, permitting, permitting deeds and master's offices, birth and death certificates. My colleague is there. He'll talk about all those documents that need to be fetched as well. The municipal essential services will be open. And of course, the police and all the other enforcement officers uh, and the And also services of Chapter 9 institutions, Parliament, local councillors, IEC, all those will still be available. And they will then decide what staff do they need uh, for the work they have to do for now. Medical and veterinary services, as was there before, it's still there cleaning, sanitation, pest control, sewage, sewage, waste and refuse removals is still there. What we have also opened now is recycling. Glass, paper, plastic, metal, tires and other things that need to be recycled is, is now open, which means the informal recyclers also will be able to work. Social work services are also allowed, counseling services, support to gender-based violence, care and relief activities are permitted. Wildlife management, anti-poaching, animal care and veterinary services, as I said, funerals are allowed, so all the services that relate to funerals are allowed. As some trade union staff will be allowed. In terms of education, I will not comment on that until 
the education departments uh, say what needs to be done. So it's not here uh, because that discussion that they need to do has not uh, been completed. I think I will end there, except just to maybe say again uh, briefly in Zulu that level four is Gaba Sesine, Jungwas Pumagwe Seslan, Sishuguti, Sisafanele Sale Makai. Safanis Nasundi Lan, Safanis Sulizan, the Safanis Fagama mask, go be covet. Is saying King Agakulu, Lake Iwane, Lis saying King. Go to a city fanel woody, send a gonke, go gulanali, Lake Iwane. Go to a footy, sit to Fulaganes of Nord, Conaban to Bezo Kaluk Sebenza, no mange Zubai won't kodwa so lo suvulela kancane umnotho sibona ukuthi khamba kanjani igciwane malehla siphinde suvule malehla siphinde suvule kodwa malibhebetheka siyavala sibuyela ku5 so sithemba ukuthi sonke sizobamba ichazi ekutheni lingabhebetheki leli igciwane khona sokwazi ukuthi umnotho suvule negciwane lingabhebetheki Pinde sele futi, si egu level yes tatu, si vule futi. So lom sebenz owe tu sonke. It's all our responsibility, it's our collective responsibility, collective challenge, and we must make collective sacrifices. Sonke. So vunye luege go tuk puma manga be in company a kwisi fuli uti ya sebenza ikbizi le gutuz o sebenza. Uzo vunye lugu chupume mao yem se benzin. Uzo vunye lugu chupume mao yo tengu gula. Nezin tez vunye luk tenga jenge ingu boza sepsiga na mat cell phone nezin tez injalwez vumele gile. Uzo vumele gagu chupume uyo tenga lezo zindu. Noma ufunize into zaka dokotela uzo vunye lu. Kodwa. Funega is cutest ningi ubese kaya. Maunge kwe mse benzin ubese kaya. Asga vunye luti sambe sibe eh, uvanzi. Si uvarashe li lobo, si uvarashe lo makelwani, si uvarashe le abangani. Asga figi lapu. Safanel tino manga buya sebenza. Ubuye mse benzin uze kaya. Iyo siti ngapandle mau nemvume. Yoguti msebenzi wa kufunu sebenze epsugu. Kuzo fanelu bese kaya. Kusuge la ngu eight. Ndamba ama nge hola resha kolumbil. Fanelu bese kaya. Kuzo gube i hora lislano. Koto age. Chongo basa si shilo. Ngumkibelu guti. Siwi si senza njintolo mvo. Engane. Yeskates ngane. Ngale zente sa sisho. Na kuluma, intonje, abantabebe ifuna kakulu, ukijima. No, 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 no exercise. So, guzo vunyelwa. Njoko basa shilo kota, guzo vunyelwa. Gentelete, ukina. So, kutisiti, guzo vunyelwa. Ukutu nga woka, unga kijima, unga kibeli paise gilako. Nga guako. Ay kuti besu suge pitoli o kichi me kuli. Suge te guini o kichi me mkungunzu. Fune u kichi me langa guako. E, ama kilomita matlanje. Noma uyanga gupi. Noma uyanga. Empuma langa nga guako. Noma yenchona langa ya guako. Noma uya ningizi mea guako. Noma uya gupi kotwa. Kubenje nga zuli. Ma kilomita matlanje. Futu vunye lukichi ma. Ay, nibe. Nikokane. Tasambensi okichi ma. No miklapi ye. Nikokane. Tasambensi okichi ma. Ka. Funega uz. Niz kichi melenshi. Kichi nywa. Kisuge la. 
ke hora les tup exen guyang ke hora les shakalo dunye exen amahora amatatu avunye lo guchukichi si te kalo nge hora les tup angoba makalo nge les la nuksuge xemiam onyo sekte ukai makatu kichi ba foot ubuyele kai ngapandle ma wemse benzin no miyo gwenza lezi ntengi izbalile. Spinde siti. I, I mshangano, ne misebenzi, ne mishato, no maini, akavunyelo. Akavunyelo futukutu ye mapagi, uye masine, ego bugia, itombe, uyo. Akavunyelo anjutupu meka, ngapandu umuyo sebenza, no miyo gwenza lezi ntengi izbalile. Nogamba usuge kwe sinis isfunda, kwe linyi pondo, uye kwe linye, usuge kwe nyindawi provinz, uye kwe nya gavu nyelu. Nga pande, umangabe kubu yisu ingane, ezazivagashe loko, kono mkulu, no malume. Na zozo buyiswa ganyi, ayu kuchinjalo nje zolo zivagashe. Masa zibuile, zibuile. Nga pande, kwa laba, aba, aba, za laba, nga satalinda wonye, aba, Abaz omunye ushala la omunye ushala la inga ni ushala go omunye mzalu go tuwa kufanel tingesi nisikati gifagashi yobona lo omunye. E, abantu abahamba nisikati kituwa guzo lalwe makaya. Bat, batati ngomoso kutaibona wafunugu ya kwa manye ama provinsi. Bayo valelega kona. Uma kufunega babu uyebeze msebe nzini. No masefe funugu ya beze makayabu. Guzo ufulele guguti babu ye. Kotwa kanyi. Maubu ya wazu guti usubu yile. So ze skiko kinda bayo gutu ya hamba futi msaombe masegilule u level 4. So mawa hamba azu gutu ya buya guzuti masegu impela sonto. Usutai, sengfunu kufagasha futi nge ahambaya kukoloko. Maubu ilu bu ili. La ukonu kona. La aba, aba sala kwenye provinz, mesebe nze kwenye, la emgeleni ama provinz. Uma inkampani abo seivuliwe. Bazo ba ne mfume. Abazo kwa zuki kombisa mapo isi nchile ngutibese mesebe nzini. Baya nasekaya. Na ikole masekufuliwe, makoda bafundi, abenza ganja alu nabo, boni gezo, imfume. Kotwa nje ugutu zulugu farashe la maprovinza manyeka. Kotwa ge umuabu savunyelwe, kotwa e, imkomo le ya ibegi uti, oba anabanga kwa sukamba, basuge kwenye ndao, oba imuabeni kwenye ndao, ise njalo, ikashinji. Nuguti banga agabanta bagwa zuge mwa ben akashiji ama shuma isan. Es nuguti futi umlindelo au kashiji au ufunyelu umlindelo. Es funu kusho futi es funu kutelu guti. Pagati neso ndo. Manzo tutuza. Akfune kuguti nizo kuala. Goba futi. Iti wane liya gwa zuge pepete kaganjalo. E, kufune kuguti, nizamu kuti, nina zoku kwa la laika partner sonto, bese kuti ngo mngu wabo, bese nitaya, mashuma islano, kota partner sonto, che kuzoku kwa lu hundred, kuzoku kwa lu fifth. Kufune kwa nje kuza banta bangani gabi, manga beba yeza. Aba kondene, ni femili. Numa ba kondene nukona bazo kwenza lapo. Kondene nukulungselu mngu wabo, kutuwa nje kuti kuzoku kwa lu, sea kela, hai gabi. Si azu kuti sugo letu kuti makusho niwe so nke siyo tutuza. Kodwa, senze luguti ninga ati nzo tutuza kusho niwe. Bese gwenze kuti futi, bese kusho nabantaba ningi. Ngoba sebe tolele liki wane katebe zo tutuza. Si tige futi, abantu fanele kwa. Basa le makaya njengu basi nshilo mabebu ye msebenzi nbangalo bezula zula. Umnoto, 
uyavulwa kancane kodwa kukhona izinto ezingavunyelwe njengokuthi iqoshwa abantu labehlala khona kulesikhathi ngoba kuzobanzima ukuthi bahambe bayofuna indawo yokuhlala kodwa futhi lokho akusho ukuthi sekufanele uhambe nje uyothatha indawo nje ongeyo nayakho ngoba wazi ukuthi kuthiwa abantu abasuswa uzosuswa phela mawenza njalo noma uvele uyongena endlini ongeyo nayakho ngayinikiwe ngoba ukuthi akekho zomsusu uzosuswa kufanele umthetho uhlonishwe ungena endlini ngokungemthetho nongithatha indawo ngokungemthetho akuvunyelwe kodwa futhi sithi ukuthi uqosho udingiswe ngalesikhathi akungavunyelwa ngoba indlela yokufuna enye indawo izobanzima okunyeke sizwile ukuthi nithi nifuna ukwenza inwele inwele asekho asekho right but asikwazi ukuvumela zininge into enjengalezo esingakwazi ukuyivumela ngoba igciwane lingabhebetheka ngoba asikwazi ukuthi si ma uyokwenza inwele awukwazi ukuthi lo mntu okwenzayo akabe imitha no half iqandi no half amele wena ube la kufuneka nithintane bambi inwele zakhe kanti usondelane manje lokho kuzokwenza ukuthi igciwane libhebetheke nenzipho ma wenza inzipho zomuntu ufanele uzenzela ezandleni zakhe umbambe nalapho ke sithi akeze ulunga kodwa izinto zokwenza ikhanda izinto zokwenza inzipho nenyawo konke kuzothengiswa ukwazi ukuzenzela wena makhaya okunye abantu bebefuna ukhamba ukuthi bahambe baye kule province basuke kule bavakashe eyasi kafiki lapho ngeke sikwazi ukuvuma ngoba kuzokwenza igciwane libhebetheke enye into ke enishile indaba kagwayi ukuthi abantu abaningi bathe abawusaphothi ugwayi abangaphezu kwenkulungwane embili kanti kule yanto esasilethile esasithe mhlambu ugwayi ungavunyelwa kodwa utshwala cha kodwa ke ngoba suhulumeni olalelayo eh siye savuma ukuthi hayi asuye kugwayi Engizoni kuhotela ngizo ngizo apuna nje omunye umbikwe sawuthunyelwa usihlalo we 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 wendlu yamakhosi ase KZN ngizocaphuna ke ngiyacaphuna manje uthi le nto kagwayi ngicela niyibhekisise kakhulu izobhebhethekisa kakhulu igciwane akeyimiswe ikakhule makhaya nasemijondolo abantu ababhemayo basonga imboza umuntu ayifaka amathe akhe ayibophe abeme anike omunye omunye ayithathe naye abeme so ingaqhubekisa ibhebhethekise igciwane age uvalwe please ngingicineke ukumcaphuna sengisho uthi bekukuningi abantu be be bekhuluma ngokuvikela igciwane ukuthi ubhema kwenza ukuthi igciwane libhebhetheke omunye wathi washo ke naye wathi abantu mabebheme kakhulu abangenayi imali yokuthi lo mtabe nephakethe lakhe lasiglit baya pemsana omunye athi skeifu nomunye adonsa nika omunye nomunye adonsa nomunye athi skeifu ngale adonsa ngathola ukuthi abantu aba 5 noma ngaphezulu babeme usiglit odwa igciwane ke lapho liyabhebhetheka iyo ke into eyenze ukuthi uhulumeni alalele athi makunjalo noma besicabanga ukuvula asingabe sawuvula ngoba kezwakala ukuthi yini abantu bethi ungavulwa notshwala ke sasifeli sithe sifuna ukuzwa ukuthi masingabuvuli hayi 
asizubvulake nabo niyazi ukuthi no professor baseyibhedlela kade bekhuluma bencoma ukuthi lento yokuthi u tjwala bungathengiswa yenze ukuthi ibhedlela zingabi amasimi egazi ngolo esihlanu nangomgqibelo nangesonto kugcwale nje abantu abagwazene abagwaziwe abadutuliwe abashayiwe abadlwenguliwe esikhundleni sokuthi odokotela babeke imbede bayibekele iguli bayibekele nabantu abaphethwe ile egciwane fanele manje ibekelwe labantu bathi utjwala njengoba bungathengiswa ibhedlela seziyakwazi ukuthi senze umsebenzi wabo azisagcwali abantu abalimele nabalinyaziwe e okushuthi uma abantu begula bephethwe icovid bazokwazi ukuthola indawo zokulala esibhedlela nalapha engosini egumbini labagula kakhulu isimo sabe sesiqayi bazoba nendawo ngoba ayizuvalwa ilabantu abaneyinhliziyo ezikwaziwe abalimele kakhulu kufanele nabo bathathele emshini edingwa abantu becovid so ngempela ke kwabonakala jayi ugwaya ugwaya nojwala ke biyekwe ngoba kokubili kuyingozi ekulweni naleli igciwane akusho uthi ke kovalwa sekuvaliwe unomphelo la South Africa kuvalwe nje njengoba kuliwane igciwane mase ngasaliwa negciwane koba yenyinto kodwa kwamanje sakhuluma ngokulwane igciwane kuzovulwa ke futhi ke izimboni kodwa zakho ethu bakhona angizusho kakhulu nenkantolo nalo phethi inkantolo osiphathela umnyango ukhona uzokhuluma naba ma tv no no, no broadcaster eh ukhona umnyisti umthembu uzonaba nowaka nowezolimo namahlathi nokudoba naye uzonaba nokugcina i i i news naye uzonaba ngalokho ngoba beningayithatha kancane i news niyazi uthi i news mazi ngaphela ezweni singafa sonke ngoba ngeke kube khona ukudla ngoke kube khona luthi i news izibaluleke kabi ngaphandle kojo lo lwesidlayo kodwa zibaluleke kabi kwivele kwivele uchain yokudla ngoba zenza angisazi kwathiwa ini pollination ngesizulu kodwa zenza leyonto sokuthi ukudla kube khona so uzobazonaba ke angisezi uchitha isikhathi ngokubalulinda lezo zinto ngoba bakhona bazonaba ngalezo mbone ivuliwe engifisa ukugcizelela nje ukuthi imboni kufuneka zithathi inyathelo zokulwa naleli igciwane kube ne nemcingwe khona namaplana khona khombisayo ukuthi kule nkampani sivikela kanje icovid nabasebenzi bayazi leyo nto ukuthi vikelwa kanjani nabazofika bezomonitha bafike bathola ukuthi cha nansi plan futhi iyalandela kubaleke kakhulu ngoba imboni mazingalandeli abasebenzi bazongenwa ileli igciwane bahanjelwe abasebenzi abaningi nemboni ivalwe ngoba phela mangabe sekuna abantu abanegciwane abaningi lapho leyo mboni izovalwa sokubalekile ukuthi nabo nomuso mabusiness omncane kufanele ifonyo lezi zifakwe kugezwe izandla iqathi no half phakathi kwabantu ukuze sivikele leli igciwane e angibongeke kakhulu ukuthi nathumela imbiko nosoma business bathumela uzakwethu uzochazwa okunye babe kusho nokunye sikwazi lukwenza nokunye sizazokwenza e ngoba lo 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 mqingo le 
aupali wepela echini. Jangoba isi mosi yangu kubega makoni zinto esboni guti aimlambe kamba gati ngatu kufulu waga ngane fundi siyo wazu guzvula. Kota magna hampi gati ngege squash. So, ngitigese ya bonga guni nanonke ma South Africa for taking COVID-19 seriously and our condolences to all those who have lost their lives, especially because of COVID, but we have a collective challenge, a collective responsibility, and we must make sacrifices in the short term so that in the long term we can deal with this challenge and gain our lives better back from COVID. So I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Lamene Zuma. We, we will now call upon the Minister of Trade, Industry and Competition to come and speak to us in the area that he's been allocated to speak on. Minister Patel. Thank you very much, uh, colleague. Uh, good evening, uh, fellow South Africans and members of the media. Last week, the President set out a framework for the new approach to opening the economy and fighting COVID-19. My colleague, Minister Lamini Zuma, both on Saturday and today set out the overall framework within which we are dealing with the reopening of the economy. To recap briefly, the risk-adjusted approach that President Ramaphosa spoke of has three components. The first is a new alert system to measure the degree of risk that we face with the spread of COVID-19 uh, with five levels of risk. Level five is the highest, level one is the lowest. Second, a system of industrial classification to indicate which economic activities will start when we move from level five, where we are now, to level four. And it allows every South African then to see how we are affected by the reopening of the economy. And third, a new comprehensive public health and social distancing set of measures that will apply in society, in the workplace, in public spaces, at shops, everywhere. The purpose of the new approach is to align or balance the level of openness in the economy uh, and social activities with the level of risk to enable us to restart or increase as many economic activities as possible, given the health risk. The main point is to save lives, to save as many lives as possible and avoid the personal devastation of losing loved ones too early and when it is avoidable. On Saturday, when government released a draft proposal for the phased reopening of the economy, we recognized that many firms and workers were taking strain and that South Africans were keen to return to work and to all the freedoms of our normal lives. The framework was based on a step-by-step -step reopening of the economy. The president announced that the country will go to level four, which means that the risk of infection continues to remain high and that healthcare systems are not fully geared up to support the very large numbers of people who will go to hospital if the virus spreads at a very fast rate. At the same time, Level 4 allows for an easing of the lockdown measures so that the economy can pick up speed and help to get people into jobs. 
government has developed a number of proposals to enable more firms to open up their operations. In some cases, it's a partial reopening. In some cases, it's a full reopening. We had, as Minister Lamini Zuma indicated, a very short but a very valuable consultation process. Over 48 hours, many, many South Africans wrote in. Firms, individuals, uh, trade unions, and they took time to do the submission. The process of public consultation allowed those concerns to be raised with government. In all, just looking at the sectors, the business organizations, unions, and so on, we received more than 850 submissions. Many firms said, please reopen our business, or if their business is already open, uh, partially, they said, let us expand more. Many pointed to suppliers that they depend on uh, who should also be allowed to reopen. As government, of course, we want to reopen uh, the economy and get full production and employment back as quickly as possible. But this has to be carefully balanced with the need for a deliberate and cautious approach to easing the lockdown measures so as to limit movement of people. The virus doesn't move. It's people that move. We shift the virus in society. And this cautious, uh, cautious approach allows us to ease the lockdown measures. Uh, and uh, it means whether it's at the workplace or in the shopping area or in other commercial sites, how can we ensure that we don't, in fact, spread the virus and get back to a point where the economy goes into level five. Many views were given to us. Some of the views were that we should be careful not to reopen too quickly. Others said, please move uh, as fast as is possible given the health risk. We took careful account of the many submissions uh, we received and we were reading through them from Saturday afternoon uh, right through to late last night. There were a number of very helpful suggestions uh, and comments from business organizations, unions, and members of the public. And we'll be giving some of the proposals further thought, including engaging with representative organizations. A number of the ideas have already influenced what uh, uh, has been gazetted tonight. Even though not all the uh, ideas could be accommodated in the regulations, we continue to consider them. They'll influence the directions that cabinet members will be issuing in the next few days and weeks, some new regulations that may become necessary with time, and of course, the level three arrangements that will be put in place. So all of those comments have been valuable to us. Our main focus must be to avoid a significant rise in infection rates that lead to loss of life, and in fact, takes us back that many of the gains that has been made through these enormous sacrifices that firms and workers and consumers and others have made, we must not give up those gains by um, how we reopen the economy. Level four will be an important preparation to get our economy and the place where we work ready for COVID. It will prepare the economy for the next six to eight months because the scientists are telling us that we must prepare for a, a strong period where the virus will still be circulating very actively in our economy and in our society at least for six to eight months. So the public representations allowed us to make some adjustment to what we published on Friday, uh, on Saturday, and uh, uh, it, will, it will now shape our thinking going forward. In the manufacturing sector, where we make the things that we buy and sell and that our economy and our people depend on, uh, that manufacturing sector is currently open for the production of food and healthcare products and hygiene products and some packaging, some limited uh, baby products and fuel production. It will now be expanded during level four to include more factories and more workplaces opening uh, with 30% of all workers in manufacturing as a whole, being able in a phased way to get back to work, but also higher levels for certain identified sectors. For example, 
50% of the workforce, it's half the workforce, will be phased back to work, not all on the same day, but in phases, in sectors like in the automobile manufacturing value chain. And this will include small and medium enterprises who produce the components that go into the cars. It will include the steel and metal uh, sector. It will include uh, cement and construction materials, rail and shipbuilding, stationary production, and manufacture of winter clothes, winter shoes, bedding and heaters. We will also have some factories going into full production, like those uh, who will continue at full production in paper making and packaging and baby products, but we've added plastics to the list, as well as an expanded number of personal toiletries made here in South African factories that we can proudly use. When industry may only have a percentage of workers uh, at work, companies uh, should structure their work rotation uh, or their work arrangements so that they rotate people, so that every worker is able to have a chance to work, even though it won't be on the normal basis. The construction industry will also increase a number of economic activities covering civil engineering for public works uh, in areas like water and energy and sanitation, but also road and bridge projects, including local road repairs. The retail sector will increase its level of activity covering uh, stores and spazas, uh, uh, e-commerce, as well as informal traders. There will be a wider list of personal toiletries uh, in the new regulations and shops selling children's clothing and winter clothing uh, together with shoes and bedding will be able to operate, as will stores selling stationery and educational books, as well as computers and cell phones and other home office equipment. Sales of hardware to the general public has been opened or will be opening under the new regulation, and a gradual opening of car sales will be set out in directions that will be published shortly. Car hire services will be open uh, for servicing the companies that are operating in Level 4. A number of persons have raised issues around e-commerce, uh, and this, uh, of course, relates to online selling and home deliveries. E-commerce will be expanded incrementally. As an immediate step, deliveries of a larger list of products will be possible and it will be expanded further during level four. It will now include products like winter clothing and bedding and a longer list of personal toiletries, hot foods for delivery, uh, products like stationery and educational books and computers and cell phones. On international trade, our imports and exports, we've started with a gradual reopening with additional products, uh, products that are now permitted uh, to be imported. Government will be looking to, to expanding the list in future. Exports of what we make and grow in South Africa will be uh, uh, opened for a wider range of products. And we've eased trade arrangements with our neighbors for goods that are in transit to neighboring countries. While many more of our port facilities will be opening, I wish to make an appeal to everyone to do everything possible to support local manufacturers and proudly South African-made products, because that will create demand here at home, in the local economy, and keep money circulating here, helping us to heal from the economic damage caused by COVID-19. Information and communication technology services will now be open for all private and business customers. And they cover things like repairs of equipment, data processing and activities, and software consulting and supply. In the media sector, my colleague has already covered that production for TV, radio, and other broadcasts will be open, and live streaming sessions with creative sector is provided for. Call centers will be able to expand their, their services to international customers on a wider scale, but with strict health protocols and social distancing arrangements in place. Many people wrote in to us to draw attention to problems of cars that broke down in the last few weeks of the lockdown. And many people, of course, rely on their vehicles 
uh, during medical emergencies and to get to work. Emergency repairs involving cars and emergency repairs at home will now be open for business and they will cover things like plumbers, electricians, locksmiths, the people who fix windows and roof repairs. We heard from many businesses about the importance of their supply chain and uh, those are the companies that supply fabrics and components and stationery and so on. And the regulations will now allow for these key inputs and supplier industries to restart operations. We recognize, of course, as government, uh, that this is not the full list. Uh, other colleagues will be adding to the list. Minister Didiza is here. She'll be talking about agriculture. And even with that, it's not a full reopening of the economy. It will leave many firms closed and others operating at less than 100% capacity. But that is the terrible price we pay for a virus that has caused devastation across the world and the loss of more than 200,000 lives, mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers, grandparents who have died. We're deeply concerned about jobs and the impact of COVID-19 on employment. The opening will mean, however, that all of agriculture will be open and about half of mining and, and close to half of manufacturing, and a growing number of retail, professional, and personal services. It will require that firms must plan very carefully how they reopen. We ask every uh, medium to large firm to put a proper uh, plan together, to look at rotation of staff for those who are not yet on full operation, to look at arrangements involving uh, employees or age uh, 60 or over, uh, so that they are able to work from home, to look at health protocols to screen workers when they come to work and when they leave, and to provide sanitizers in public areas and in workstations, and to have arrangements in every workplace of social distancing of one and a half meters between workers. An increasing number of professionals uh, are beginning to work from home, and this will, of course, add to the economic output without increasing the risk of the virus. The main challenge, one that has been highlighted by my colleague that I really want to underline, is to implement a phased and cautious return to work and to do it successfully without a rapid spread of the virus. If we can achieve that, and if we can increase the level of testing uh, of uh, our people, it can lay the basis to move to level three, and step by step get uh, back to greater levels of uh, uh, production and, and greater levels of normality. We must work together with our people, with businesses, uh, with workers, uh, with consumers to get there as quickly as we can. Thank you. Uh, th th thank you very much, uh, colleague Patel. He has covered the various sectors that will be opened now at various levels of those sectors. Before we take questions, I would like to take one, one sector, the agriculture sector. So that's his talk. You just speak to that sector for a few minutes. That's one sector that's very important. All of us can't live without that sector. <laughs> uh, that's uh, Minister Titiza. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Mtembo, my colleague, uh, Minister Tlambini Zuma, our chairperson of this committee, Minister Patel, Minister Lamula, Minister Kele, and Minister Mtsualedi. Thank you very much, uh, colleagues uh, of the media present and those who are in other parts of the country, fellow South Africans and the world. Thank you very much indeed. As uh, Minister Mtembu says that agriculture is one of those important and critical sectors of our economy not only for the economy, but also for our own livelihoods. In the beginning, I would like to say thank you very much to all the farmers, as well as the farm workers, who have kept the country 
fed, and food secure even during this time. I also want to thank those workers who are working in the food industry who are ensuring that some of our primary production can be processed so that we can eat them uh, as nice delicacies. I know we shared that uh, constituency with Minister Patel, but since he didn't thank you, I'd like to do so on behalf of both of us. Indeed, agriculture has been an essential service. It has been operating even after level five. Not all of it though uh, had been operating. So what we've done now in level four is to make sure that some of the supporting industry that make agriculture to function must actually be open, such as those that relate to mechanization, your tractors, your combines, um, other implements that are required for production. We've also ensured that uh, areas such as uh, shops that sell agricultural chemicals, seeds, as well as uh, fertilizers should also be open so that farmers can be able to get seeds and manure and other related uh, inputs for them to operate. So we are allowing all of agriculture to operate, albeit under strict conditions, because even though we have to continue to produce, we must do so taking into consideration the health risks that are there for COVID-19. So we need to ensure that we do proper distancing. We make sure that the farm workers as well as farmers do have protective uh, clothing so that they protect themselves and protect the industry so that it can continue to operate. We are also saying we are now going to open up for exports of all agriculture, not only the wines. I know that a lot of uh, the wine makers have been pleading with government that we must open, but also for Amarula and many other commodities and wool and other synthetic products that are made out of agriculture is going to be open for export. We also are opening up for beekeeping, and it is one of those permitted industries that will get permit to operate at night. Because for you to be able to harvest the honey, you can't do it necessarily during broad daylight. And if one were to see how your beekeepers address, they actually dress like they are dressed for COVID-19 uh, because they must protect themselves so that they are not stung by the bees. We're also going to make sure that the fisheries sector is also open for fishing. And we note as well that during the month of June, we've got a sardines run in some parts of our country, but Minister Chrissy will ensure that proper directions are given on how that will be done so that we don't have mass of people um, harvesting those sardines without proper directions. Harvesting, we know that we are starting particularly in this coming week with the harvesting of the grains, particularly maize and oil seeds. Those are also um, allowed. Forestry is also allowed, as well as the inspection, certification and quality control, because as we know that for our food safety, we do need those services to continue. Also research agricultural research is very important. I know there's one sector that there had been concerns, particularly those who are in the livestock industry, about um, the auctions. Auctions will take place, but under very strict conditions. We will limit the numbers to 50, like in the funerals, but proper distancing must be um, observed so that we do not also allow those centers of auctions to become epicenters for spreading the virus. Ningasho nje ngokufushane ukuthi ezolimo njengoba bezivele ezivulelekile sizoqhubeka ukuthi silime sikhiqize ukuze abantu babe nokudla ngibongeke kubalimi nakubasebenza basebenza ezindaweni zolimo nakwezinye izimboni ezenza ukudla siyashoke ukuthi manje sesizokwazi ukuthi singahambisa izinto 
esizi kikizayo ika kulgazi kulomkaka wezolimo uguya emazweni apesheya na goma keluane uguze pela sitole lao manja omnoto atu gutikata ezi kwa meni ze tunjenga bali imiganti futi na sezwe nlonge nze chigelele. Nginashwa ge uguti naglabo abatobayo na bobazo vumelele manjo uguti batobe na labo abatengi sayo izi luane zabo iga kulgazi kuma okshin. Kota sizo gwenza loko ngenlela yoguti si ezempilo sizi pegelele uguti abantu baya pepa futhi inani labantu abazoba kuleza indawo zokuthengiswa kwezo zlimo azibezi ukoba enanini elingaphezulu kuka 50 ngesikhathi lokho ke kuzokwenza ukuthi sibhekisise senze futhi nemiqathango ezosho ukuthi kuzohamba kanjani ukuze phela abakazidlodlo abaphethwa ngumnu umzana undosi nabo bazi ukuthi sizosebenza kanjani singazitholi nje sesisenkingeni yokuphula umthetho ningasho ke ukuthi siyabonga kakhulu ukuthi nibambisane nathi kulesisikhathi siyazi ukuthi eqaleni njoba bezivulelekile nje Besivuleleke ukuthi sikhiqize ukudla kuphela kodwa manje sesizokhiqiza nokunye okusemkhakheni wezolimo ikakhulukazi labo abakhiqiza ihuli noma ukodini nako sekuzovumeleleka njengamanje ukuthi kuqhubeke ngibonge kakhulu ke kinina nonke ensemakhaya nasemazwe nangaphesheya nakini E, basakazi beze zindaba, sitembe kuti sizologu skube kanja sikuluma, sisu kuti kuzo hamba kanja anigule zizindawo, ezi vulelegile, eskabeni, sesine ngiabonga. Thank you, thank you very much, Minister Titiza. We will now take uh, questions. I know we have been here for quite some time, but for good reasons, so that we are all on the same page as we move towards level four of the lockdown. Uh, without any further ado, are there any questions from our online services? We have two, let's take those. It is allowed, by the way. The first caller is Bonga. Bonga, you're through? Bo Bonga, we are listening. Yes, Minister. This is for uh, Minister Patel or Minister. I just want to understand when you, how have you mitigated the risk of level for opening with the possibility of more infections rising because we've seen in Germany that when they open or their infection cases the road. So in South Africa, is there a cut off time or is the cases come too much that you consider the restrictions again? And number two, on the issue of public transport is very, very critical in South Africa. And also we know it's very overcrowded, particularly buses and rail. So are you depending on the goodwill of South Africans to social distance in that instance? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will uh, we will have the Minister of, of Public of Transport that will answer to the question we'll be having the Minister on Friday. But of course, there are norms that colleagues have spoken to, that wherever we are, even in public transport, uh, social distancing becomes the norm. Uh, also, the wearing of masks, becomes the norm. But of course, we'll have more uh, from our colleagues and the Minister of Transport when he holds his own media briefing on the direction that he'll be giving. The next one. The second caller is Mercedes from SABC. Mercedes, you're through. We, we are listening, Mercedes. Yes, yes uh, good evening, Minister. Um, I see exercising will be allowed between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. Now, most of the essential workers, some of them, they, they leave home at 5 o'clock. They have to take four checks just to be 9 o'clock at work. 
and at 6 a.m. they are not uh, they are at work and between 9 a.m. even some of us many of the essential workers they are not there so they cannot exercise and many of the essential workers they do need even that exercising more so what uh, would happen uh, uh, will I be arrested if maybe after 4 o'clock just before 8 o'clock I decide I'm so tired even right now I'm at work uh, if I go and exercise uh, as an essential worker, will I be arrested? And then I have a second question about 8, eight o'clock in the evening and uh, 5 o'clock. Right now, as we speak, we know even children are in the streets. They are not even in their homes. How is that going to be monitored? You know, uh, I can even bring pictures for you. I can monitor that and bring pictures for you to show that the lockdown regulations are not uh, are not adhered to. And uh, unfortunately, some of the people who are doing that, people who uh, where social distancing is virtually impo- is actually impossible because they live in cramped shacks and so on. And lastly, another question I have is the one around uh, the plumbers and so on. Is the uh, what are you catering for for those in the informal sector? Is it only for the established people? who uh, like your plumbing companies, if I have a leakage or, and uh, I have a door that has to be fixed, why can I not use Baba Mkise who's in the formal sector, who's actually under lockdown now and who doesn't have a livelihood? Can I call him? Will I be arrested? Will he be arrested? And what uh, are you doing to support those who can be called uh, uh, people like, uh, like them? And also to train them and tell them, look here, yeah, you are in the informal sector, but you have to follow the protocols and hygiene, and this is all that. In the end, uh, uh, I shouldn't be forced to use an established plumber to come and do my plumbing. If I've been using Babam Kiz, they would be there for 30 years. Mercedes, we have heard your last question. WhatsApp services. Yes, Minister, we have. If we, can, if we can hear you properly. Okay. Uh, the first question is from Adrian Besson. Uh, from News 24, and it is directed to the Minister of Justice. He's asking, can you comment on reports that thousands of prisoners are about to be released to open up prisons in line with, so, with physical distancing policy? If true, what is the criteria? How many prisoners and when? The next question is from Hajra from Power FM. Her question is, If it is true that schools, domestic workers, and most retail shops will open for business on Friday, when it seems a lot of the economy is opening under stage four or level four, is this because we are stuck between choosing to deal with COVID-19 or a possible food revolt? She's also asking, if a family with kids traveled back, if a family with kids traveled before the lockdown to another province because their schools were already closed, will they be able to travel back to their province before the opening of schools? And what the procedure and what is the procedure what, that they must follow? There's also a general question around if we can just clarify the issue of the once off travel. When can it happen? And um, is it for everyone? That's a recurring question that we've received. Um, then the last question from Hajra is, surely the NCC has a comment on the Department of Education saying no more than 40 children in a classroom. Is this not, um, surely this is high risk amid COVID-19. Our third question is from Johnny Sai from Africa News Agency. There is a question regarding small businesses who run car vehicle, car or vehicle washing businesses across South Africa, basically car washers. Are they allowed to open under level four lockdown, considering the fact that they contribute significantly to the cleanliness of public transport that we are preaching? The fourth question is from Soiso Maliti from the Daily Dispatch newspaper. He is asking, an an Eastern Cape family which lost a loved one due due to COVID-19 on Tuesday claims that the municipality had told them that the municipality would bury the deceased family member and this burial is planned to take place tomorrow without the family present. Going forward, is this how funerals for people who died of COVID-19 will be conducted? And the fifth question is from Miriam Issa from Finweek. She's asking, we have heard that the peak of our epidemic will be in September, but the graph 
that the graphs of yesterday's presentation, assuming they're referring to the Minister of Health, showed it would be more likely to be in July. This has relevance for the alerts going forward. Can you please clarify? Thank you very much. Uh, who would like to start? Uh, maybe let's start with uh, Justice uh, Minister Lamola. Only one point. Yeah, no, thank you. I think for us, uh, I've had one question related to the speculation or reports that thousands of prisoners will be released. We have not made any announcement about that. Neither has the person who has constitutional powers to do so made the announcement, the president. So we cannot be held accountable for speculation. So the person who has made the announcement and speculated and made the reports, I think is the one who must account for for that announcement. Ourselves cannot account for people who are speculating in the media, writing articles and making announcements that are supposed to be made by the president and so forth and cause general confusion in society. So I will, we will not be able as government to, to answer to the speculations. If there is any announcement, the president will make it or government through its uh, channels will do so as we have uh, done here. At this stage, we will not be able to, to respond to that one. With regard to the, I think I will just go to the one of uh, COVID-19 uh, funerals. The Department of Health has, uh, has uh, produced or released guidelines with regards to how COVID-19 funerals are going to be conducted. And um, from our regulations here, which are also meant to help the Department of Health to supplement, to regulate the issue of funerals, they deal with the ordinary funerals. So at this stage, we have um, only dealt with the ordinary funerals in the regulations as they are supposed to be. But any COVID-19 related death is dealt with in terms of the guidelines of the Department of Health. And the guidelines are very strict. We expect that uh, South Africans will have to bear with the Department of Health and uh, comply with those uh, guidelines because they are also aimed to protect uh, all of us. Thank you. Um, Minister, should I start with you? Okay. Minister Lamine Zuma. Maybe may, may better come here, Mama. You have a problem. Mm. Yes, please. Yeah, this time I'll just take a few and leave the difficult ones for my colleagues. Um, I think the uh, colleague Lamula has already dealt with the funerals. Um, so we must just look at the guidelines, but uh, I don't think they say municipalities must bury without the relatives, but there are guidelines on how it should be done. Uh, kids who have traveled to other provinces, I think I did say that those kids will be allowed to come back who had visited, but the regulations do spell out what should be done so that those kids can travel. Um, and the ones of uh, travel, again, it's it's for people. It's 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 for people who are coming back, for mainly for work, and mainly people who are coming back for um, 
to come back to their areas of res of residence. Uh, it should not happen today because today was still at level five. But when level four starts, they can come back. Uh, they, there's a holiday on Friday. It would be already on level four. And also depending on when their employers are calling them back. But we hope that they won't all decide to come on one day and just give a lot of problems for the police on the road. But it, it should happen now for those who are coming back from work if their employers uh, uh, call them. And also those are coming back from home. But you can't be going up and down one direction only towards your work or towards your home. And the question about walking, uh, unfortunately, it was difficult, as the president said, that it will be allowed under very strict conditions. So it was difficult to get those strict conditions. And the strict conditions because it, it, it may lead to more spread of virus as many people go out um, on the streets. So we are hoping that nobody will want to do uh, things that are not in the regulations. We are hoping that everyone will then maybe for a start, you may not be able to exercise every day. Maybe exercise when you're not working, when you're off. We are afraid that we can't satisfy everyone, but we hear you. Um, as I say, maybe for a start, you can exercise when you're off. And when the levels come down, maybe there, there will be more a lenient a time for exercise. But for now, that is what is there. And we don't want to arrest anyone. We just hope that everyone will want to do what is there in the regulations. But it's important to keep to what is in the regulations because what you do may affect people, another person's life. You may not be affected by the others. The other one may be affected. So it's better to try and do what needs to be done. And as I say, as the situation evolves, if things get better, then even the exercise hours will get better. Um, in, in terms of transport, obviously, the 70% in the taxis will still be kept, but the Minister of Transport, as we said, will be there tomorrow, and masks will be uh, expected. And as, as I said on Saturday, even if you don't have a mask, you can take your scarf or your T-shirt or something and cover your nose and mouth for your own protection and for the protection of other people. But also the Department of Health has a website which tells you how to make your own mask. So really everyone must cover when they go out because it's both for their own safety but for the safety of others. Our health is very interrelated and interlinked. So it's important that we, we do that. Uh, because I've been speaking for too long, I'll leave everything else to my colleagues. <laughs> the, the, there was a question on education. Uh, we would uh, answer that question when the education sector comes. 
they'll be coming to face the nation tomorrow will indicate at the end of this meeting when tomorrow. Minister Patel. Well, uh, thank you very much. The first uh, uh, set of questions, I didn't catch the person's name, uh, related to whether there's a cut-off time for level four. How did we get from level five to level four? How long will it be to stay at level four? Now, the system that we've um, uh, developed that uh, uh, the president spoke about when he addressed the nation is not a mechanical system that says you stay in one level for so many weeks then you go to the next level for so many weeks, and then you go to a further level. It's a risk-based approach. It looks every day we collect information on the number of people who've been tested, how many are positive. We put that into our model, and we are able to see, is the level of risk going up? Is it stable, or is it going down? We look at the number of hospital beds we have available, including new hospital beds that we are able to put into field hospitals and so on. We see how many of those beds are being used by people who are COVID positive. And if that level is good, in other words, we've got many more beds coming on. We don't have so many beds being used by people or the number of beds being used is dropping. Then we know the level is decreasing. Based on that risk assessment, we put all of that together. We look at the advice of experts. We get the economic data on how the, um, uh, the different sectors are coping with the numbers of people who are at work. And based on all of that, the uh, Minister of Health would then make a recommendation to the uh, Minister of uh, uh, Cocta, Minister Dlamini Zuma, and uh, that would then be discussed uh, at Cabinet and a decision is made. And I point that out because the more we work closely with each other as South Africans, the more we ensure that we limit the spread of the virus, we increase the number of people who are tested, we ensure that more hospital beds become available, the quicker we can move to level three and indeed level two. The next question that was asked is, are we going to rely on goodwill in areas like public transport? And the answer is, a lot of what we need to achieve with COVID-19 does require goodwill, partnership, us working with, uh, with each other. There's only so much that government can do. There's much more that we need to do as community members to curb the spread of the virus. We're in this together. It's about saving the lives of as many South Africans as we can. And so not everything can be done by regulation. Not everything can be do, done by the law enforcement um, uh, services. Most of the heavy lifting will have to be done by our people uh, using the guidelines that we can develop, using the facilities that we can all make available. But ultimately, it requires uh, business people, workers, unions, consumers, community leaders and others to work with us to bring down the rate of, uh, of infection. Uh, Mercedes asked uh, a question around uh, plumbers and asked whether we're only catering for uh, the formal sector. The regulations don't um, particularly refer to registered tradespersons. So it leaves some degree of, uh, of flexibility there. But in, in crafting regulations, it's not about trying to find caps and loopholes because the more people who move in our society from house to house, the greater the risk of infection for all of us. Every time someone comes into our home, uh, it is a greater level of risk that we introduced into our house. And so we've got to use it sparingly. It's really just for emergency repairs. It's only to do those things when the roof is leaking, we've got to fix the roof, uh, that we, we need to rely on, uh, on these, um, uh, these services that will now open up. And so it's really a, a call 
that we must use it as sparingly as possible. The fact that it's open doesn't mean it has to be used. It should, it's really available when there's an emergency and we, we need to use someone to come and uh, do plumbing work in our home uh, or fix um, a window that, uh, that broke. Hajra asked the question, uh, is this a choice between COVID-19 and food revolts, if I understood her properly? Um, and are we going to, to uh, uh, level four to, to avoid uh, one rather than the other? The approach of government is to see all of what we need to do through a health lens. We've got to save lives. That's the first part of what we need to do uh, as South Africans government supporting our people in that effort. At the same time, it's important to have food and hygiene and health products coming through the production line. And I'm, I'm really happy, uh, Minister Didiza and the farmers uh, and the food factories have been working very closely with each other. So the food supply line is holding up well. Uh, and there is food that is coming off the production line and it's reaching supermarkets. Some weeks ago, people were were panicky, uh, and uh, some, uh, some uh, people went for panic buying, stocking up, thinking that the food supply would be interrupted. We've been able to show in this period, in spite of panic buying, that the food production lines are uh, intact and that food is available. So it's not about toss-ups between this, it's doing both. It's fighting COVID-19 and at the same time, in order to have a healthy population, we've got to have a food supply. We must produce uh, hygiene products uh, and uh, uh, face masks and uh, all the other things that's required. But it's also beginning to open up the economy more so that we have steel production because factories need them. So that we have car production because that helps to create more opportunities for us to earn money as South Africans and use that money to fight COVID-19. Uh, it's about uh, having packaging services open so that the food can be put into uh, hygienic packaging so that by the time it reaches consumers, uh, it, can be, it can be safe. And it's about winter clothing because uh, when it is cold, the body's um, ability to fight uh, infection is lower. We become more vulnerable. So these production are all part, uh, not only to get the economy going, but also to protect our people. Uh, someone asked about car washes opening. Uh, uh, if you read the, the regulations which are, are published tonight, you'll see it's not there. And, and we do understand every business in South Africa has got a good case. There's no question about it because it provides the livelihood of the people in that firm. And we are not insensitive to that as, uh, as government. But at the same time, if the whole economy opens, if everybody, 16 million workers, were immediately to return to work, if all the shops and, and, and uh, commercial operations were open, allowing 60 million citizens to be able to have all the normal access to those that we normally have, we will see a massive spike in the infection rate. That's what we learned from Italy. That's what we learned from when, when other countries opened too fast. And we see today more than 200,000 people have died already. And so in South Africa, we're trying to limit the number of people who die. And that means uh, that not everything can open immediately. As soon as it is safely possible, uh, of course, it's in our interest as government to do so. Our day jobs is to stimulate the economy, to get people working. These are some of the toughest decisions we've had to take because it limits the very thing that the different parts of government are there to, uh, to, to promote. But it is done to try to save South African lives. And that brings me finally to Miriam Issa's question on the peak uh, that uh, some of the scientists have said the peak of infections may only be reached in September and that the graphs that are produced now may indicate uh, an earlier peak. We've got to push the peak out as far as possible. And this is a message Minister Zuelim Kize repeatedly raises in public, <clears throat> in cabinet, in the uh, command council. And it's done because July is not a great month to have the peak 
of the spread of the infection. <clears throat> it's in the middle of winter. It's a, a month when it's very cold in many parts of the country. When you are in the heart of winter, uh, not only uh, do you have all the challenges uh, that people need to contend with in winter, but it's also when uh, po the population is most vulnerable, when the fatality rate can be highest. In other words, the number of people who will die when they're COVID-19. Not everybody who's COVID-19 dies. And we need to stretch it out because it gives more people the chance to recover. Even if you are going to get COVID-19, if everybody gets it in July, the healthcare system is overwhelmed. There's not enough ventilators to help. There's not enough doctors and nurses. And so by flattening the curve, we allow more people uh, who get COVID-19 positive to actually uh, uh, have uh, proper healthcare treatment and to live to tell the tale, not to die in the process. And so part of what we're doing, the more gradual reopening of the economy is to flatten that curve. And the measures we're putting in place, the appeal we're making to firms, to businesses, uh, to workers, uh, to work very, very uh, closely to ensure that we have health protocols at the workplace, that we have social distancing, uh, that we wear masks, um, uh, that, we, uh, that we use hand sanitizers. All these measures are to try to push out uh, the period when... Uh, uh, the virus uh, spreads most actively and we get to the peak. The later we get to the peak, the more it will help us to fight that and it, the more it enables the healthcare system to deal with those people who are now coming into the healthcare system. Thank you very much. We will take the last rounds of, of questions. Are there any? Oh, we've got three. Uh, can we start with our online services? Minister, the first caller is Tiri from News24. Tiri, you are through. We are listening, yeah. Tiri. Hi, thank you so much, Ministers. Um, just two very quick ones. I don't know if you can hear me clearly. But, but the first one is around the, the liquor traders. A lot of them saying, while they understand that they're not allowed to trade, there's an issue where alcohol is a source, and we've seen incidents of looting. So they are asking, what will happen? Will there be plans, permits given to allow them to move alcohol from one area to another to put them in storage? That's the first question. And the second one is about the uh, want of movement between provinces. Um, does that mean that you can send permits in that process? That's the first bit of it. And secondly, how then do you test the virus in that movement? Because what we now understand from what governments and experts have said is when we move in, so how are you then checking to make sure that it doesn't move to new areas as people move either back home or to areas where they're working? Thank you. May we request those who will be following on CD, please just check that your TV is not on as you speak or your radio because it interferes with the communication system uh, so we might not hear you properly. Thank you very much. The next one. Minister, the second caller is Nazir from Glow TV. Nazir, you are through. Nazir? Hello, my name is Nazir Nur Mohammed from Glow TV. My question is, are there any restrictions before food outlets are allowed to open on the first? For example, shouldn't food outlets first fumigate or do pest control measurements, which they are actually supposed to do on a regular basis? But obviously they couldn't have did it because they were, because of lockdown. Who and also who checks if any old food ingredients are going to be used and they're not expired? That's my first question. My second question is, what procedures are there in place? Also, all oh, this is part of the first question. What procedures are there also uh, place to check if the delivery services used comply to strict hygiene control? Because I'm hearing of people getting 
as far as cigarette sales are concerned, our president announced on TV, on national TV, that cigarettes will be on sale from the first. Now we are told it's not going to be sold. This reminds me of the ESCOP load shedding statement in December, with the promise that the president promised the country that there won't be any load shed, and you know what happened before the holiday season ended, and there was load shedding. Are any heads going to roll? Was the president ill advised in this matter? Thank you. Thank you. Next. Next. Minister, the last caller is Lizeka from News 24. Lizeka, who are listening. Lizeka. This is to the Minister, um, Kafka Minister. Um, Minister, I just wanted to find out from you what informed the decision around uh, cigarettes, apart from the 2000. Uh, uh, people that um, uh, registered their complaints about the relaxing of cigarettes. I mean, some people have uh, said that these regulations are draconian, these regulations have no constitutional validity. Um, is there any scientific proof around what your insinuations were um, regarding cigarettes? And also, just as a by the way question, I just wanted to find out, Minister. Or, or minister in the presidency, what is the reason for these media briefings uh, being so late at night? Considering that some of our people, some of our people need to work the next day, and uh, some of our people need this information early on. Um, why do you not transmit this information early on for people to be able to receive the information? Okay, we will answer that one. Can we get to the What's up, Tim? Um, there is a question from... I, is that uh, on? The, the second one. No, your, your mic. I think they're both on. Oh, okay. They're not on? I don't, think, I don't think that the other one is on. No, this one is for, for the transmitter. Oh, to, okay. Yes, right. this okay. one is for... Yes, all right. All right. Um, Marianne Merton from the Daily Maverick. Um, she's asking, please elaborate on the motivation for implementing a curfew, confining people to their homes between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. Uh, there's a question from Paul from the Sunday Times, direct to the Minister of Agriculture. Will farmers be permitted to employ seasonal workers? There is a question from um, Vikas Berger from Netwerk für Entwendach, and he's asking, um, will domestic workers be allowed to return to work, and if so, under what regulations and circumstances? Please uh, provide all necessary details. Also, what precautions should be taken by employers and employees in this regard? Then there is a question from Charlotte at EWN, and it, it says, um, will people who move, who need to move house locally, i.e. not travel across provincial lines, but um, people who need to move, um, will they be allowed to do so? If so, will removal companies be allowed to operate? Then there's a follow-up question from another journalist on the same issue asking, when will moving companies be permitted to um, interprovincial traveling to allow people who need to move? Then the last question is from, the fifth question is from, um, Oh, I didn't note the person. But it was a question that was asked this afternoon uh, as well, Minister. Um, and he says that Minister Zulu, when asked these questions earlier, directed them to Minister uh, Lamini Zuma and is asking, uh, do these regulations deal with um, the following? Can registered NGOs under the banner of Care Services and Social Relief of Distress who have a CIPC license are they able to do the following a provide food parcels to individuals in need and deliver those to their homes provide food parcels to communities within their communities doing by doing a drop a food drop off at a specific location can they organize food handouts at their facilities to the wider community and do the regulations address this particular issue in detail Maybe on, on, on that last issue, if I remember well what the minister said, the minister said 
those that would like to do those activities, including deliver food to needy people, should work with the departments of social development in the provinces, if I remember very well. And indeed, the minister did indicate that, in fact, these are the organizations that they work with in delivering food to needy people. But there is a process. They must work with the social development in the provinces, but also with SASA in the provinces, SASA managers in the provinces. That's what I thought the minister said. The minister didn't shift the question to another minister. Uh, who wants to start, uh, colleagues? Uh, minister Laminezo. Uh, thank you very much. There was a question uh, about whether when people move from one province to the other, uh, will they not carry the disease along the way? Uh, one, it's important for people to take responsibility. As it was said, they must wear masks, they must sanitize, and the cars should not be full. Uh, no car is allowed to carry more than three people. Um, and the tax is not allowed to carry more than 70% of its capacity. And to take all the precautions when you cough, you sneeze, wear a mask, but also make sure that uh, you protect other people. Because if people need to come to work, they will have to travel. So we have to take all those precautions. Um, and of course, when they come to work, the employers are supposed to make sure they screen them to make sure that they don't have symptoms like the high temperature, cough, sore throat, all those things. And if they do, then they, sh they should not be allowed to continue working, but they must be tested and then quarantined. And if the test comes positive, obviously they have to be also isolated. So there are procedures that are being put in place, but everyone must take responsibility. It should not just there be the responsibility of government, but every single person must take responsibility. The employers, but the individuals must also take responsibility. So that's what uh, should happen. And I was asked a, a question about cigarettes and insinuations. We're not insinuating anything about cigarettes. We just talked about what cigarettes do to health. We, we all know that cigarettes uh, do affect the lungs. And that is why even in this country you can't smoke in public even when there's no COVID to protect people who don't smoke because there's even passive smoking. Even if people smoke around you, you can be affected. So it's not an insinuation. The World Health Organization has very clear uh, indications and treaties about uh, tobacco and its hazards, health hazards, not only in the lungs and other parts of the body, but in particular this time, COVID also uh, attacks mainly the respiratory system. So I, I'm not sure when we say insinuations about tobacco. Um, but also the public was talking about practices when people smoke that could spread the, 
the virus. Others were saying, but you, the government, tell us that cigarettes are dangerous for the lungs. COVID is dangerous for the lungs. So why are we, are, are, are you allowing it? Or, and as we said, we were consulting with that document. And the consultation result is what made us, as a collective, not one person, as a collective. And the president, when he speaks, he also doesn't speak for himself. He speaks for the collective. So he spoke for the collective. And as we said, it was a consultation. And a government that is responsive to people, even if it takes a decision, and if people show that they do not like that decision because of health reasons, and we are, we are fighting a health crisis, a health a pandemic, it's a government that is responsive and a president that is responsive that will listen to the people and say, even though I'd said that, but taking what everybody has, most people have said, and the issues they've raised. To be honest, even myself, I'd forgotten about SCAFE, that people smoke together. Uh, I'd forgotten how people put saliva on their soul and also how they share. So these things came from the public showing the dangers of allowing smoking because in the way people smoke, especially the poor who share, it would really create a very fertile ground for the virus to spread. So, yes, we then collectively, as we had taken a collective decision then, a collective decision to say, yes, with all these things, especially coming from our people and showing us the dangers, we must listen. So that is the story about tobacco. It's not insinuations, it's science. Uh, otherwise, if it wasn't a problem, we would be smoking even here. Why are we not smoking in this room? Why public smoking is not allowed? Because tobacco is a problem to your body. So let's live with that. But obviously, once the dangers of COVID are gone, then the situation might come to normal. I don't think we can say the measures that are being taken to save people's lives are draconian. And it's the, it's the virus that we may call draconian because it affects people, it kills people, even if it doesn't kill everyone. But can you imagine what is happening in other countries, as my colleague was, was saying? Do we want to see that kind of carnage happening if we can avoid it, if we can prevent it, to see people dying in thousands in a day, hundreds in a day from one disease, to see mortuaries not coping, hospitals not coping, to see long trucks carrying bodies, of our people, we will do everything we can to, to try and avoid that situation. That is why we have gone not on just opening the lockdown, saying now there's no lockdown, we're all free, we can do as we please, no. That's why we've taken this risk-adjusted approach. And obviously, we'll go slow on it, different levels. If we see that there is a problem, we, we, we will act accordingly. Because the idea is to make sure we don't overwhelm our hospitals. If we didn't do the shutdown, the lockdown at the time we did, 
we probably now would be going towards 20,000 infected cases and many, many deaths. But the lockdown allowed us to move slowly. The curve is a bit flatter than it would have been, and we want it to remain like that. If when every week we look at the average of new cases, if it shows that there is a problem, then obviously we'll change. It may be that there is a problem in a particular place. Maybe the lockdown will be there. The Chinese, that's what they did. The most problem was in Wuhan. They did lock down other places as well that had cases, but Wuhan had the longest lockdown because that's where the, mo the most problem was. So even in our, in our case, if we can see that in that particular place things are going very wrong compared to the rest, we can also go on a higher level, level five in that particular place because the idea is to really fight the virus. And as, as we said even earlier last week, that it is not the restrictions that will create problems for the economy. It's the virus. And this has been shown in previous uh, pandemics. So I just want to stress that we, we, we really shouldn't be saying this is draconian as though it's a voluntary thing that government woke up and decided we must do this, we must do that. And we hope that all the citizens can understand that and help in this fight and we fight together. And if we fight together, we can overcome and we will not overwhelm our health services. So I just wanted to stress that. Um, and everything else that we do has to do with that, trying to fight this virus, opening up the economy, because it would be difficult to close the economy forever until we have completely dealt with the virus, but we are taking a very cautious route even as we open the economy. And I think the Minister Mtembu has said what the Minister of Social Development uh, said about, answered that question, so I don't want to uh, get into that. Um, I think I will leave the other questions uh, to my colleague. And of course, we also hope that companies will follow the directions because we have said, if you recall, recall we even said before the company opens completely, there must be a small team that goes to prepare so that when the, the rest of the employees come, all the COVID-19 measures have been taken, including f cleaning the place, fumigating the place, including removing old ingredients if they were left there. So it's very important. But we have said that companies must first prepare. There must be an advanced team so that by if they want to open on Friday, it means they can start preparing. If they want to open on Monday, they can prepare. But we have said companies must prepare. So I'll just leave it at that and leave the rest to the other colleagues. Yeah. Why, why is we are waiting for Minister Didiza? Let's just answer that question of us holding media briefings at night. Our people are listening to what we are saying. Um, and we have had media briefings, by the way, in the mornings, in the afternoons, 
even in the evenings because uh, these matters are quite important to our people and it's quite important for the government to communicate with our people on these matters, particularly the risk adjusted approach to easing the lockdown from level five to level four. So uh, that will be the answer that uh, we, we have not just chosen this time, but again also uh, the earliest opportunity that this team got after the decision was taken by cabinet was this evening. So that was the earliest opportunity uh, Mam Kosazana's team got to come and speak to the people of South Africa on these regulations after they were approved by cabinet. Uh, Ma'am Minister Didiza. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ntembu, and thanks for the question. Just to say that seasonal workers, yes, they'll be allowed, but not interprovincial, not outside the country as some of the farmers do. The borders are still closed, only allowed for goods, not for people. Will therefore In a provincial as well as drawing labor from the region. But if I also to speak um, as the chair of the AUSTC on agriculture, we again would like to say to our neighboring countries and also members in the continent that we must ensure that even under the most uh, restriction as a result of the COVID, we must continue to produce so that our people in our continent can continue to have access to food and ensure food security. Nabasebenzo, West Kasha Nega, Kulgaz, Ugvun, and Jobasa Zuti, Sizobeses Katini, Sogvunum Bila, Koto Ogba Legi, Le Uguti, Asingati, Silanda, Basebenzi, Labuga Zine, Izifundazwe, Uguti Bazo Sebenza, Kulaoma Plaz, Asito Le, Basebenzi Beskashana, Kulezo Zifundazwe, Ezi Guzo, Nagulezo Zindao, Ezi Setuza, Neguama Plaz, Uguze gunga bikona, ugunyagaza, ogningi, kwa bantu babe uvans. Siaza banye, baba limi banago, uguti, batole, abasebenzi, kumazwe, ango, makelwan. Si tina logo aguvumelegile njongoba, eshilo njo ungongoshe, uma mkosaza na zuma, uguti, ogwa manje. Asika vuleli imnele, Ugwe shagwe nyuga gwa bantu. Koto asivu melakpela. Ugu tigu hambe. Ugu ula kanye na lezo zimpasa. Ezi tingegayo emazweni. Ango makelwane ngea bong. Minister Patel. Uh, thank you. I'll uh, respond to a few of the questions that uh, has been uh, posed. On Nazir's question on uh, fumigation and so on at food outlets, of course we, we basically would like all food outlets always to have the highest standards of hygiene. People are eating food that's um, uh, prepared there and those food would then be home delivered. There would not be uh, hot food sales uh, at the establishment itself, but it would be for home delivery. So all of the normal standards need to be put in place. I think what we, what we 
keep on, on, on reminding ourselves as government uh, and, and it's something that we communicate is that the normal uh, uh, arrangements where government put a regulation or law in place is important. But we also need everybody to work together, every South African, uh, every person in the country to observe the basic health protocols, whether they relate to fumigation, uh, the uh, arrangements involving uh, delivery services and so on. There's so much that government can do. A lot more of what needs to be done can only be done in partnership. On the, uh, the question of the president's uh, uh, comments, uh, Nazir, I would, I would uh, uh, like to make the point that the president has indicated that we go through a process of consulting with our people, that based on that consultation, we finalize the measures that we have in place. This is a listening government. It's a government that's hearing uh, the views of society and where we need to make adjustments based on the views that, uh, that we hear, we make those adjustments. And it has every bit of support from the president uh, when those adjustments need to be made. On uh, Lizeka's question about uh, the late briefings, it's already been addressed by uh, my colleague, uh, uh, Minister Mtembu. But I, I would just like to, to highlight that the, the processes we're in in, in, a, in a pandemic, a, a, a crisis, is very different to the normal processes of government. Normally, in producing regulations, we would have weeks, if not months, where lawyers carefully go through them. They go through many processes. Here, we have to do what is typically done in three, four months' time. Uh, we do in three, four days' time. And so, we wanted to make sure that tonight, as the Gazette, the Government Gazette, was being prepared and published by the government printers, we could immediately communicate the news to, to the public, to our people, so that more and more South Africans have an opportunity to know as quickly as possible and to make the necessary uh, arrangements. On uh, uh, Vickers Burgers' question on, on domestic workers, there are, of course, about a million people who are in the uh, category of uh, services that are rendered at home, uh, uh, workers who are domestic workers, gardeners, and other services that are provided at home. The intention is not for all of the million people to return to work. It is step by step. In level four, there are still significant risks with the spreading of the virus. So in the uh, published document, uh, members of the media will see that it is a phased return <clears throat> that in level four, uh, those persons who render services uh, in the home uh, for child care, uh, care for the aged, uh, uh, live in uh, uh, workers and so on, those would be in level four. In level three, which is where we hope we can get as soon as possible, uh, there would be additional uh, numbers of people uh, that will be returning to work, but not during level four because we're still trying to contain the movement on the roads and the movement from one household to another household, because that's how the virus uh, spreads. Um, <clears throat> some questions were asked about um, uh, NGOs, and I think uh, more and more directions will be issued to clarify this. Uh, we're obviously keen to have as much support harnessed at the same time to do so in a responsible way that doesn't in itself create new public health risks. And those, uh, those matters will be clarified, I think, by, by ministers. Uh, finally, on um, the issue that's come up about uh, moving people uh, between uh, provinces and the, the risks that are inherent in that, um, I think that underlies, that question underlines the caution uh, that we express with, with Level 4. We can't have a choice that says the whole economy is closed or the whole economy is open. We've taken the view step by step we will try to open the economy provided we can manage the risk. And so uh, as much of the regulations is there to, to enable a controlled, gradual, step by step opening of the economy, 
uh, as opposed to keeping it completely in lockdown mode because uh, of the virus or alternatively opening it up completely. So I'm hoping that as uh, businesses, uh, firms, uh, workers engage with the new framework, that the main point is to, to enable as much opening within the risk that has been identified by uh, the health uh, specialists uh, who constantly, of course, help us, guide us, and provide us the information uh, on which the key decisions are made. Thank you. Colleagues, we, we have been uh, answering questions and giving information from 20 to 8. It's now quarter past 10. Um, if there are any questions, we will take those questions to the relevant departments uh, to answer uh, to our ministers uh, for those that we might not have answered their questions uh, because we, we now need to also be sensitive to these colleagues who didn't even sleep for quite some days yeah. as they were busy uh, looking at the submissions that were coming from the business sector the worker representative, representative sector, including our public, so that we come with this product that they have now uh, put before first cabinet and then the nation. It's now gazetted. Everybody can access this gazette on these regulations. Uh, indeed, they have been, we would like to thank you, colleagues, uh, together with other colleagues that are here, Bumam Titiza, uh, the Minister of Police, who has also been part of the team, uh, Minister of uh, Home Affairs, who has been part of the team, who produced this wonderful risk-adjusted approach to easing the lockdown to level four. We now have the regulations that guides us as we get to level four uh, tomorrow midnight we have regulations in place and again as colleagues have said we are a listening government if our people say this idea of you opening tobacco at this date does not make any sense we have listened uh, and again, we, we agree with colleagues and Mam Kosasana that uh, there is absolutely nothing draconian about that. Uh, it's a listening government uh, that uh, says we, we have heard what we have said and uh, because we, we, we came out to you and said this is what we intend doing and you made your comments and there are some comments that uh, even made us to rethink of what we intended to do, uh, precisely because of this consultation that uh, we have made with the people of South Africa. So absolutely nothing draconian about that. Uh, at some stage, indeed, uh, when we get to some levels, and from where I'm seated, I think all of us as South Africans, if we work together, Minister Patel, Minister Lamine Zuma, Minister Lamula, if we work together, I think we can get to level one. If we just work together, this, this can't be a government matter alone. It's, it's a matter that needs all of us as South Africans to hold our hands uh, and uh, have this ambition of getting to level one from level four, ensure that we reduce infections and we strengthen our health system. Get to level three, reduce again infections, 
strengthen our health system, get to level two, until we get to level one. We are a nation uh, that has gone through difficulties. The president has said this so many times. This is one difficulty that we must go through together. It can't just be a government matter. It's a matter for all of society. Uh, with those words, we would like to thank all our listeners at home. Particularly, we would like to also to thank the, the various radio stations that have carried this broadcast, including community radio stations, uh, SAPC radio stations, and other independent radio stations that have carried this broadcast live. We really appreciate this. Again, also our various uh, TV stations that have also carried this broadcast live. Thank you and thank you and thank you very much. Without you, we will not have been able to reach out to all our people in their homes and everywhere where they are. Thank you for making yourselves available. Uh, to come to this briefing and, uh, and inform our people on these new regulations that will then inform how do we proceed at level four of the lockdown. Again, we are still under the state of disaster, by the way. We must, uh, until we are out of this danger, we will still be under state of disaster, we will still be under lockdown, but of course the levels will change depending on the risks that are inherent. Thank you and thank you very much and good night.